Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Franklin TV's presentation of Franklin High School Sports. Tonight, the boys basketball team, the number three seed in Division I basketball in the postseason tournament, will take on number 14, the Brockton Boxers. I'm Jay Horrigan. I'm joined by Griffin Tolinson, Tolinen. Even you told me beforehand, Griffin, I got it wrong. How are you tonight? <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. Um, really looking forward to this game. As you mentioned, number 14, number three seeds. Almost a reversal of what we had last night with the Franklin girls team as the 12 seed taking on the number two Bishop Fian uh, Shamrocks over there. And uh, expecting a little bit more of a blowout there as the girls held their own um, and made it an interesting one as Fian unfortunately came out with that one. But my point in saying that is that despite Franklin being the number three seed and Brockton coming in at Brockton coming in as the 14 seed, um, this is March and anything can happen. Absolutely. This, this should be a good game. Both teams very athletic, uh, very aggressive. Brockton's actually going to start uh, number 20 here who's jumping. Uh, Chitty, Chitty Bear, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He's a freshman, we heard. And that was uh, not the strongest toss in the world. So Brockton will start off for a three-pointer. Justin Allen will get it. That three-pointer didn't hit anything. Harvey. Harvey ends up taking it himself. Got away with a little travel there. Allen trying to get open. Could use uh, Justin Allen. Griffin uh, being as hot as he was a couple of games ago where he had five or six three-pointers. Absolutely, Chris. And I I mean, I believe that last year you're talking about, he scored, it was eight for nine, I actually think it was. Chris. Yeah, so I knew it was something like that. 24 points from beyond the arc, almost a third of his team points. He was absolutely on fire. Um, they're going to count on him to have another sort of tear tonight if they're going to be able to put this one away. That was uh, a three-pointer that was no good. Justin Allen ends up coming up with it. Now O'Neal has it back to Allen, to Scarangello. And these first three possessions, all shots coming out from beyond the arc. Let's see if that's a pattern that continues to play out throughout this game. Justin Allen turns the corner, drives to the hoop. No good. Harvey tries to get that rebound. And no luck finally taken by Brockton. Montero will bring it up. Keep an eye on the matchup between Harvey and uh, number 20, Chitta Bear for Brockton. Uh, Harvey is playing a real physical. It'll be interesting to see how the officials let that physical play go. And that's three for Fonts. And Brockton yet to take the ball inside the, uh, inside the arc, really. Um, not clearly a part of their game plan, but kind of surprised me with their size. Let's see if they continue that. Yeah, right. That. Gonna have a held ball there. That's gonna go in favor of Franklin. It's Franklin's uh, ball on the alternating possession. And the nice chance of hit the weight room from the Brockton students. There we go. Today. So it, Harvey and Chitty Bear are shoving each other before the ball is even in play. So the, the officials are going to have to get control of that as Harvey dribbles out top. And you're going to have a travel on that. And Harvey, I think, kind of along that vein, wanting to send a message there um, by being a little bit physical and trying to drive on him. Unfortunately, some good defense there doesn't work out, and yeah. the uh, travel leads to the turnover. Our officials tonight are Dan Murphy, Steve Young, and Drew McGinnis. Murphy is the one who was nearest the ball just a moment ago. This is Steve Young right in front of you, and the third is Drew McGinnis, all veteran, veteran officials. Have you asked Steve if that naming was intentional before? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> And what did he say? He's, he's, that three short. He said, of course. <laughs> Harvey takes the ball up top. Gets it in the hands of O'Neal. 
and it was a tip. There's no backcourt there as the defender tipped it. O'Neal underneath to O'Leary. O'Leary ends up going up. He misses the shot, but he's going to shoot two. The and foul is on. I think it's on 15. Yeah, Jay, and, and Franklin, not a team that's lacking in size, but almost being dwarfed by this Brockton yeah. team right now. Um, not letting it deter them, though. I mean, I, you know. So on the, on the board, they have it 25. There is no 25 on the Brockton team. So that's why I think it was 15. Yeah, I think you got to be right there. Um, but not, not letting the height deter them, as I was saying. Still attacking the pain and only 1-3, only I believe, so yeah. far. Yeah, they, so they corrected that. That'll... Uh, That'll go against Hopkins, his first, team's first. And O'Leary sinks them both. 3-2, our score, 440 left in the opening quarter. Ball out top by uh, Baker. There's two Bakers on the team. Number four is Duran. That long shot there was no good. And O'Neal brings it up court. O'Leary over to Harvey. Harvey to Allen. Oh, there we go. Long shot there by O'Leary, no good. But it would be good to see O'Leary uh, heat up from outside, Griffin. Absolutely, Jay. Hawkmock, league MVP this season, put up just astounding numbers for the Panthers and was able to come up clutch when they needed him. They're going to uh, hope he can do that tonight as well. And hitting some a few from three to get him going would certainly yeah. help the Panthers. Montero drives to the basket for Brockton. His layup doesn't go down. Franklin brings it back. Harvey goes right to the basket. And Harvey and with scores. a bit of a, uh, with a small celebration there, mocking yeah. number 20's height. Uh, he better be careful. Because uh, at some point, the referees are going to get control of this. And actually, if you see Harvey right now, he's holding. They're going to have a foul outside. I think it's going to go against Scarangello. Yeah, I believe that was a reach yeah. out to Scarangello there, Jay. Three, three just snuck past him and uh, got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. He did. 4-3 our score. Franklin up one over halfway through the first quarter. Fonts being guarded by Scarangello. Fonts gets it over to Baker. Baker scores, hits a three. Puts Brockton up. And Fonts already showing himself as the leader of this team, orchestrating the offense every time they come up the floor. Yeah. So the scoreboard has it 5-4. I have it 6-4. I hit their Brockton's first basket as a three-pointer. So I may have missed that. Yeah, no, I, I had it as, I had the same way. I think the scoreboard did, too. I think his foot might have been on the line there. Oh, no, Block the there on O'Neal's drive to the basket. Then coming back the other way, Brockton loses it. O'Leary gets it up court, looking for someone open. And into the game is Herndon, number three. O'Neal gets it to Harvey. Harvey for three. No good. That went off the backboard. And while he was left open, that might have been for a reason there. Uh, Harvey, not the typical three-point shooter on this team. No. Nope. Maybe not the look that you want at this stage in the game. I think that was uh, Francois who got that basket, but a block there as Harvey tried to go to the basket that gets blocked by Chitty Bear. And for those of you uh, neighbors who are watching the girls game last night, quite the opposite in terms of the officiating here. The girls almost every uh, almost yes. every little bit of contact near the hoop was being called. Tonight, quite the opposite. We've had a few blocks already yeah. and the refs seem to be have the mindset of let the boys play. To totally different game. Uh, the way it's officiated between the boys and girls. They've corrected the score on the scoreboard. 8-6, Brockton in the lead. And that three-pointer is good. 
And, and uh, Jay, two thirds of the way through this first quarter, Brockton has not taken a single shot. That has not been from three point. Yeah, it, it, not necessarily what we expected. There's a foul on Fonts. That'll be his first, team second. And Jay, particularly in warm-ups, I mean, I wasn't all too impressed with their shot making from three, but their layup skills, their layup packages look really impressive. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, they, they, they weren't hitting really many of their jump shots. They were hitting everything underneath. And normally with their size, that's the way they play as Herndon goes to the basket and scores a deuce. 11-8. And maybe Jay, just the presence of Harvey and O'Leary in the paint maybe contributing to the, the change in the game plan for Brockton. Oh, that's going to be a block. Um, eh. Bit of a coin flip there, Jay. Yeah, I, I, I see why it was called a block. I think O'Leary got there a second late. He didn't have established his guarding position and therefore the block. Yeah, maybe the, the foot's still flattened on the yeah. floor before there. So one minute left in the first quarter. Oh. It's going to be a held ball. It'll be Brockton's ball in the alternating possession. Francois and Allen tie up on that. And Brockton's strategy so far seems to be, let's shoot the ball from three and use our height inside to get rebounds. And yeah. hey, if you look at the scoreboard, up by three with the ball, hasn't been a terrible strategy so far. You know, Chitty is doing a lot of screening uh, on the ball. Like right there, Franklin uh, kind of got burnt on that. Uh, that basket, nice shot by Montero. They didn't really recover on that last screen and it allowed the layup there. Yeah, for sure. And, and maybe something to talk about as Bradley Herndon gets the and one there and fires up this Franklin crowd. Uh, maybe something to talk about uh, at the end of the first quarter for this Franklin team, being more physical on the glass. Yeah, that foul on Ratu, his first team's third. And coach oh. DJ Neely opting for some size here as he brings in Jacques. Yeah. But the last two games, we've seen uh, Hansi get a lot more playing time, and I'm sure a lot of it's because of the size. Absolutely, and I believe also coming off of an injury later in the season, perhaps I, that was part I of the I think plan. I had heard that, yeah. No good, Herndon's free throw was unsuccessful. Franklin now in a little zone trap, and that's backcourt. And a little momentum for these Panthers as the yeah. uh, seconds wind down here in this first quarter. Harvey goes out of the game, and O'Leary comes back in. Herndon will bring it up. No shot clock as we're under 35 seconds, actually 10 seconds left. Hansi for three. And fresh off the bench, Jacques wastes wow. no time sinking the three to tie it before the end of this first quarter, Jay. Well, and if, if he can get going with that three-pointer by any chance, even if he scores a few of them, uh, what a momentum builder for the Panthers there, Griffin. Absolutely, Jay. And I mean, when you... They've been, the Panthers have been attacking the paint so much, but they're so lethal from beyond the arc. If they can really establish a game both inside the paint and be from beyond the arc, they're going to be really hard to yeah. guard tonight. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. So at the end of one, our score is tied 13-13. Team fouls, three against Brockton, two against Franklin. And Jay, an interesting stat I found coming in. Brockton just five and four on the road this season, not really showing it tonight. No, they're showing that they're a much better road team, at least the way they played uh, the f in the first quarter. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see if that continues throughout the rest of the game, although Franklin heading into the second quarter with a bit more of the momentum than Brockton, certainly. Well, and, and I think it was obviously uh, last night uh, at their girls game, the Franklin girls were by far the better team in the first half of that game. And then they kind of came back to earth a little bit, and the Fian girls kind of took over and were able to come away with the victory. Great job by the girls' team, though. Great season. 
Absolutely, and, and Franklin basketball, um, particularly the girls, with a legacy of success here at this school, and they definitely um, upkept that legacy this season. Uh, yeah, it, it, you have to go back many, many years to find the last time that the Franklin girls team was out of the tournament this early in the round of uh, 16. Bradley Herndon with multiple spin moves, and it's a surprise there was no foul call there, Jay. Yeah, I thought there would have been a foul. And they're saying Franklin Ball here, Jay. Yeah, he's saying he had a tip. I didn't see it, but there were a lot of bodies in the middle there, so. I mean, I don't think the Franklin players did either, Jay. I think all of them were walking no, back. No, they started going the other way. But the Panthers will certainly take that. They, they just stopped it there to check on the whether or not the shot clock should be reset. Allen for three. No good. And, and not the site you want to see if you're a Franklin fan. No, Ratu comes up with the rebound. Bennett being guarded by Allen. It's Montero being guarded by O'Neal. Oh, and it had to stay with the ball there. Nice job by Francois staying with the ball. Yeah, and a great job by Bradley Hernan knowing his uh, the mismatch in size there, kind of just going for the ball. Francois just yeah. ended up finding it in his lap and put it up for an easy two. O'Leary, nice move. Yeah, it's going to be on the floor against Francois. His first, team's fourth. That will reset the shot clock at 35. And Jay, this has already been some of the most physical basketball I've seen this year. Yeah, it, it will be. Uh, you know, the deeper you get into the tournament, the more they let you play, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, a, like you said, a culmination of the playoff atmosphere as well as this Brockton team. They clearly like to play that way. That's a five second violation on the inbound. I think uh, just looking over at CJ, uh, Coach Neely, he's asking the officials, uh, the official near him to watch. It looked like O'Leary, when he was cutting through the lane, there was an arm up around his neck trying to keep him from going through. Yeah. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And perhaps a makeup call there after the controversial uh, Maybe, tip call. Maybe, yeah. Montero over to Baker. I'm sorry, that's Fonts. Number three is Fonts. O'Neal is able to haul that one in. Thank you. That's going to be a help ball. That'll go to Brockton. The clock, I don't think, will reset. No, and, and a few things just going uh, the wrong way for Franklin. They're, they're thankfully to stay in it um, by two points right now. So it's just a few turnover opportunities that just haven't gone their way. There's, there's two seconds on the shot clock since Franklin never had a possession. It stays at two. Let's see what they've drawn up here. And that's a kick, so that'll reset it to 20. And inbound for Brockton. And uh, was that a floater or a pass, Jay? I'm not sure, but Francois with the basket. Makes it 17-13, Brockton. And Franklin just needs to find some offensive rhythm right now. Their star player is not able to, to get anything going right now. Let's see who is the player to step it up and get us and uh, be the one to create the spark for this Franklin team. It looks like, uh, Griffin, that the physicality of this game is affecting Franklin more than Brockton. Absolutely, and I think right now Brockton's just taking the physicality to Franklin. I think yeah. perhaps maybe bringing Harvey back in to set the tone a little bit physically is something CJ and Coach CJ Neely might have in mind as you see Harvey at the scoring table. That's a block shot. Allen was looking for something. That's going to be a charge. And Jay, that's what I meant there. Just a, a few tough things going uh, going against Franklin right now. The block on the layup, and yep. then the, the, re the rebound off the block, unable to fall to anyone, kind of just kicking off of people's shins, and it finds its way to Brockton yet again, seemingly as it, as it has so far tonight. 
5-18. Left in the second quarter. 17-13, Herman will bring it up. O'Neal gets it up to O'Leary. O'Leary with the spin move. He was making those the other night. And some hectic basketball right now receiving. Yeah, it, it, just even that play to the half court, you could have had a foul on two of the Franklin guys. That's going to be a foul. And Jay, I wish we had the numbers right now, but even without them, I think it's pretty obvious to tell that Brockton is, uh, Brockton's in the lead right now because of the way that they've been playing on the offensive boards. Absolutely. Countless second could, points chance. You could see the, at least right now, the frustration in the Franklin kids' eyes. Uh, and it's all because of how physical it is. Absolutely. You know, they're having a challenge just dealing with that. And Franklin, definitely more of a skilled team. Um, yeah. As you mentioned, Jay, taking out, taking them out of their element. Let's see if uh, Coach C.J. Neely brings in Jacques potentially to uh, help try to offset that. They are uh, clearly letting the young men play. Certainly, no doubt about you know, that one If you watch Brockton on defense, they're, they're touching, they're grabbing, they're holding. And I think Franklin just needs to recognize that and, and take it to Brockton and get in that, in that element because right now, um, letting it happen the other way, letting Brockton take that physicality to them, uh, it's not working. Yeah. Timeout uh, for Franklin coach C.J. Neely takes it there, takes the first one. I think at least part of the reason uh, he took that timeout, Griffin, was try to get his players to stop worrying. They... Every time up and down the court, at least one of the players are kind of throwing their arms up in the air for frustration. If you're a referee, though, if you don't start calling these soon, you're not going to be able to call them the entire game. Absolutely, Jay. You have to wonder at what point the referees draw the line and say, if we, you know, if we start letting these things slide, then you know, where does the physicality eventually lead? Correct. Yeah. And, and you know, you want to let the kids play. Uh, but you also don't want to get it, it to get to the point where that play can lead into something more uh, dangerous, whether it's a shoving match. We have, unfortunately, in the state tournament, we've seen a couple of games end with uh, bench clearing, um, bench clearing shoving matches. We've seen a coach go after another coach after losing at the buzzer. And uh, not the sportsmanship that we're accustomed no, to typically, Jay. No, no. And a tough foul call there on Gino Scarangello as, as we've been mentioning all game so far, the refs letting the boys play, not on that one. Jeez, I thought uh, that uh, Fonts there kind of jumped into Scarangello and not, Scarangello didn't come down on him, but referee saw it the other way. Fonts makes his first of two. And Jay, what do you think the conversation had to have been in the Franklin huddle after that timeout? I, I think it is just play your game. Keep playing your game. Don't let, you know, they, I, I think they've let the Brockton kids into their heads a little bit. Absolutely, Jay, I'm with you. And, uh, I think Franklin just needs to, and what, as you've been mentioning, the the calls haven't necessarily gone their way as they'd like to. They've been a little bit off with their communication as Harvey almost throws that one out of bounds. Uh, just not everything working like the well-oiled machine that it usually is as he loses the handle there and uh, is another Franklin turnover. So yeah. I think that all of these things are just kind of culminating in Franklin's head right now and uh, contributing to a negative mood. But um, as Coach Besaitis, one of the assistant coaches on the girls' basketball team and, and the head coach of the, the soccer team likes to say, every game has its peaks and valleys. The Franklin yeah. boys clearly in a valley right now. Let's see if they can dig their way Franklin out. Franklin only down eight, still very early in the game, halfway through the second quarter. And a basket there by Fonts, who goes to the basket. And O'Leary was like a statue waiting for him, and Fonts yeah. just ran around him. Oh. 
That's a travel, yeah. So he had to wait uh, there. O'Neal needed to wait for someone else to touch the ball. He can't pass it to himself. Although that could be considered a dribble. Yeah, to be honest, yeah, I'm not sure. You don't see that one in the pros too much, so no. I'm not sure exactly what the specific rules are on that one, but one you way know, or another, I, the rest I didn't like it. I would have called it a travel, but as I think more about it, it could have been. And Double dribble, perhaps? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I was watching, so there's a foul against Elves. His second, I believe. Team six. Harvey and Alves are going at each other. Harvey uh, down at the other end kind of grabbed Alves and Alves looked to the officials. I, I, I wonder if we're going to start seeing more called now. I wonder, and I, and I hope That's so. That's going to go against Alves, I believe, as well. And that'll be his. Well, I have it as his third. The board is showing it as his second. And I'm liking this Franklin mentality here. Uh, both Ben Harvey and Sean O'Leary, very physical players, normally um, trying to take it to Brockton a little bit uh, on their own and, and not letting the physicality of Brockton or the way that this game is going so far change their game plan. As you said, Jay, um, maybe what Coach T.J. Neal was saying in the huddle sticks to the game plan. It looks like they're doing exactly that as, Fra exactly yep. that, as Franklin is continuing to try and drive the paint. And O'Leary makes two of them. Makes the score 25-15, three minutes left in the first half. And let's see if these Panthers can get on a little bit of a run here before the end of it. Coming to you live from the gymnasium at Franklin High School. That pass is stolen by O'Leary. O'Leary goes all the way in, then kicks it out. Allen, nice move there, gets it to Herndon. Herndon goes to the basket. Contact, but no call. And a tough little bit of a circus shot there from yeah. Herndon. And we're going to have a timeout by Brockton with 2.32. I think clearly the move Herndon didn't want to make there was looking to the corner, but that pass was blocked and kind of had no choice just to but flick that up and hope. Yeah, you, you wonder, I, I think, you know, it's, it's a wise decision to go towards the basket for the Panthers, but they're not hitting them. Absolutely. You know, at some point, you want to see them start taking the three-pointers because, Franklin, when they get up with their three-pointers, they can go on runs that'll just shut people down. And, Jay, I think that's exactly what's happening right now. Brockton, I think, is forcing Franklin to come inside a little bit. They've been playing very tight on the perimeter, and almost any drives to the paint uh, have been one-on-ones. They've been saying, we know we're bigger than you. Let's see if you can beat us uh, by driving to the hoop. And I think that's why we've seen so much of Harvey taking it to the paint, O'Leary taking it to the paint. And once they hit, start making those shots, yeah. then Brockton's going to have to start collapsing in from the wings to come support. That's when those threes are going to be open, and that's when Franklin well, can start getting into a little bit more of the game. You wonder how long, though, they're going to wait to start making those shots. We've got two and a half minutes in the quarter. Uh, you know, the, last night in the Franklin girls game, they were saved and kept in the game by, uh, as I remember, Peterson had what seemed like 153 pointers <laughs> in the first half. Yeah, Peterson was on fire that game. 24 points uh, throughout it to keep her team uh, competitive. 31 seconds on the shot clock. And that little pop there, no good. Herndon comes up with it. He gets it to Justin Allen, and that's good. Allen with the bucket. And that may have been one of the first breakaway layups of this game for Franklin, something we're not it's used the to. the first breakaway layup that they've made. <laughs> yeah. They had a couple that they missed earlier. A few misses and a few blocks there, I think, as well. Baker's ball. His attempted pass there to Fonts gets knocked away by Herndon. Brockton will inbound it. 19 seconds left on the shot. That's, that is not backcourt. And not to implement a uh, broadcaster's curse here, Jay, but uh, the tide seems to be turning just a little bit for Franklin here. Oh, oh, wow. As I might have just done it there, I'm going to stop Montero talking. Montero <laughs> with the basket. 
That looked like it had zero chance of going in. Absolutely, Jay. We talked about circus shots. That was one of them. And uh, just Harvey way. back in the game. And what a move by O'Leary as he draws the contact. Yeah. That's going to be a foul against Chidi. And it's the eighth team foul. So they'll be shooting, uh, the Panthers will be shooting one and one the rest of the game. Game or quarter? Thank you, quarter. And O'Leary not deterred by the Brockton student section jeers as he hits yeah. the first one. O'Leary makes the first of two. And makes the second, cuts the Brockton lead to eight as Montero will bring the ball up court. A minute 25 left. And Fox has had a great quarter, six points this quarter. Yeah. Harvey brings it, gets the pass inside to O'Neill. Gets it outside. Harvey's going to start it over again. Drops the ball to Herndon. O'Leary looking to do something. He drop passes it to Herndon. Herndon just missed that layup. Can't the, say anything else. And the size and physicality of Brockton clearly affecting that shot as Herndon yeah. wasn't able to get the angle of attack he wanted there. O'Neill playing great defense on Montero. Absolutely, he was an honorable mention for Hawk Mock MVP uh, All-Star for a reason. And that shot is way off. Franklin uh, will bring it up. O'Leary has it under 20 seconds left. I'm going to assume they're going to hold it for the last shot. And down by 11, they'll try to make this a single-digit deficit going into halftime. Yeah, that has to be a foul. So uh, that should be the second, I believe, on Hopkins. It'll be a one and one. And Hopkins looking around and asking the officials, what, I can't hug my teammate or yeah. my opponents? Well, he, he, so the rule is you can't put your arm out like that. You can put your arm straight up, but you can't put it out to the side and hold the player from cutting. Uh, that's the first time I think we've seen that called tonight. It's been happening the whole game. And uh, perhaps a sign of the uh, officials cracking down a little bit. Maybe. Here. And not updating the scoreboard there as it still says 19 to 30. We'll see if they fix that, and they do. And O'Leary hits the second. And that was O'Leary's fifth point of the quarter. And he'll take a break. Hanzi's back in the game. Always a crowd favorite. Oh, the floater by Montero to beat the buzzer. And a tough break for Franklin fans as uh, the Panthers are down 11 at halftime. The score. And. Uh, Sorry, go ahead, Jay. The uh, boxers take their biggest lead of uh, the game with 11-32-21. And uh, what does the conversation have to be in this Franklin locker room? You, they've got to get back to playing their game. They're just, they're being out physical. Uh, they're, and it's clearly gotten into their mind. And they, they just are not playing the way we're used to seeing the Franklin Panthers play. I agree with you, Jay. I think that... We really, I think one of Franklin's greatest strengths is that obviously they have their players that they rely on more than others, but I think that Franklin does a really great job of spreading around their wealth and uh, they make the other team respect all of their players. Right now that's not happening um, and Brockton is taking them out of their game a little bit and is forcing Franklin to be a little bit predictable yeah. uh, with their with their scoring. Uh, I, sorry, with their totally agree. They're, they're just, uh, they're, they're letting uh, the boxers dictate how the play is going, whether it's slowed down, whether it's, it's speeding up fast break. 
Yeah, and I think they have the conversation this locker has to be this, exactly what that, of what we were just talking about there and saying, look, this is, if you don't change it, this is going to be the last half of the season and yeah. for you seniors of your high school careers. So do you want to go out playing Brockton's game and playing their way and letting them take you out of their game, of your game? Or are you going to come back, you're going to dictate the tempo, you're going to play your brand of basketball, and you're going to make Brockton beat you on your terms? We'll see in the second half. I totally agree. Uh, the uh, good thing going forward, uh, the winner of this game will take on the winner of Beverly North High out of Worcester uh, at the end of the week. Um, it, a date and time hasn't been set for that game because part of it depends on who wins. If Franklin wins, the game will be here because they'll be the higher seed. If uh, Brockton happens to pull it out, then the game will be either at Beverly or North High because one of them would be a higher seed than Brockton. Yeah, and then that's Beverly being the 11 seed and North High being the six. Six, yep. There are a lot of tremendous games going on tonight. Zavarian at Needham. Uh, Central Catholic at BC High is going to be a great game, actually. That game's tomorrow night. Uh, Springfield Central, North Andover. And uh, let's hope that the Franklin boys team can make this one a little bit more of an interesting one uh, in the second half, Jay. Yeah. Lynn English is at Newton North. Should be another game, another really good game. Uh, and then Attleboro, the 18th seed, the lowest seed still left in the Division One boys' side of the state tournament, is up at Lawrence. So we'll be back uh, in about five minutes we're going to take a quick break and we'll see you shortly all right folks we're back for the second half of this round of 16 tournament game and griffin what are your thoughts now that we took a little break there now that we've taken a little bit of a break there, um, I'm really keeping with the, the same mentality that we had going into the break, and that's that Franklin was really taken out of their game as we finally see them come out of the tunnel for this second half, taking a little bit longer in the locker room than they typically do, and I think that's a sign of uh, a change of game plan here. And I don't know if that's a tactic. I don't know if that's a mentality. I don't know if that's a play style, Jay. Um, but Coach C.J. Neely looking very serious right now as he struts in with his clipboard. Uh, clearly cooking something up here for the second half yeah, and looking yeah. to to, to turn the tides of this game. You know, we, we did a couple of people we talked to during our break. The consensus seemed to be that CJ will knock them, knock the kids back into it so they get refocused and play their game. Yeah, and I think he's uh, he gets a lot of praise and is, I think, rightfully so, attributed for a lot of the success yeah. that this program has had over the years. Uh, and so I don't think that's necessarily um, wrong to expect at all to have had a successful pep talk from Coach Neely in the locker room and to see a bit of a different Panthers team out here yeah, correct. in the second half. Um, I, I think uh, they'll come out, they'll, they'll be aggressive. Um, you just hope they don't get overly aggressive to the point where they get frustrated. Absolutely, and I think they just need to come out and they need to play with tenacity, Jay. Yeah. Uh, particularly on those offensive boards. I don't think Brockton has this lead right now if they aren't as successful as they were on the offensive glass in that first half. So I think Franklin um, needing to corral a lot more of those rebounds, get positioning um, on those shot attempts and limit those chances for Brockton. That's gonna be one of the ways they get back into this game. And one of the ways they are not yeah, is some turnovers is like another that. turnover. And that, just uh, watching you and uh, Pete Royce last night in the girls game, the turnovers for uh, the Franklin girls was the difference in that game. Absolutely, the turnovers. That's gonna be against the, Harvey. Turnovers and free throws. And as we've seen here, it's been, it's been more of the, the turnovers and the rebounds. Yeah, uh, that have been the things that have dictated this game. And so those, I think the two 
the two things that Franklin needs to hone in on here in terms of the stat sheet to be able to come back in this one. So that, that was Harvey's, I've got it at his second, the board has it as his first. Drive to the basket, in and out. And let's see if Franklin pushes this ball right now. Allen with a no, deep we three. Need Justin. And while Allen has been hitting those fairly consistently this season, I'm still not sure that's the look that they want with a down by 11. No, although, it is, as you know, you get uh, Allen fired up, you get him hitting those shots, he can reel off three or four of them in a minute. Yeah, Jay, you get Allen fired up, you get Steph Curry on your team. That's pretty much how it goes. That's going to be against Harvey. And, and Harvey better watch himself. And I think the senior captain right now just trying to bring some energy to this yeah. team. He has to make sure he does it in the right way. He's going to get himself into trouble there. Thankfully for, the, for Franklin fans, the foul is on the floor, so no free throws. Garangelo guarding Fonts, and Fonts goes to the basket. His shot is no good. Justin Allen comes up with the rebound and brings it up court. He gives it to Harvey, and that's going to be a foul. And Jay, that is one of the first halftime adjustments that I'm noticing from Coach C.J. Neely, getting Scarangelo in this game and putting him on Fonts. Scarangelo, a scrappy, tenacious defender, um, much like Marcus Smart, I think. And I love the move here from Neely. Um, attack them at the source. Fontes has been running this entire offense. He's been taking a lot of their shots. And it seems they're really flowing through him right now, putting Scarangelo on him to try and halt this Brockton attack. And those past two offensive possessions for Brockton, he was able to do that successfully and force missed shots. Harvey missing the first of two. And there's a violation, but the ball goes in anyway. One of the Brockton players stepped in too soon. So the lead 10 for the boxers. Six and a half minutes left in the third quarter. In interesting, the Panthers are in a zone, a 3-2 zone, which you don't see much. They play predominantly man-to-man. -man. The 3-2 zone, as you were saying, Jay, unexpected from Franklin, as well as um, having predominantly defensive players on the floor, and it is working for Coach C.J. Neely right now, and we are starting to see why he gets so much praise as one of the dominant coaches in this league. Um, changing the defensive style, changing the group of players out there on the yep. court, um, and we're already seeing the momentum shift for Franklin here. So that was Hopkins' second, f third foul, I'm sorry. Yeah, and he has to be careful there. Uh, obviously, a big part of their success so far with his size um, and ability to grab rebounds, they're going to need him in this game. Going to have a timeout here Brockton for Brockton. Um. And let's see here. I'm curious to, uh, to find out what Brockton is going to be talking about in this timeout, whether it's just try to play your game, don't worry about what they're doing. Yeah. We, know how to, you know, we know how to counter this sort of stuff. Um, let's try to get them out of it, or whether it's going to be more of a fundamental change in strategy here for, uh, for Brockton. I, I am curious, during, after that call, as the call was being reported, uh, Harvey went back up to that same official that called the foul on him earlier, and then who we followed around with the basketball and had words with the official. I, I'm just curious as to what that conversation was. Yeah, me too, Jay. And we, uh, Franklin fans can only hope that Harvey's not getting himself into trouble there, potentially creating a little bit of bias against this Franklin team. So Harvey, just watching him, he is one of the most competitive kids out there. But he also, he brings himself right up to that line and sometimes crosses that line, I think. Yeah, and I think that's, it's a little bit of what Franklin needs right now, not necessarily the crossing the line, and I think that's where Harvey has to be careful here. Coach clearly keeping him in this game as that senior captain uh, to be a leader out there and to, to set the tone for this Franklin team and have them follow yep. in his footsteps. And so he needs to realize right now that the way to do that is not by committing fouls, but by being an aggressive yet clean defender um, and having his teammates follow in his footsteps as no kicked ball is called there, despite it going off. It's gonna be a held leg. ball. So a kick ball has to be uh, intentional. 
if the pass just bounces off a player's leg, it's not a kickball. Interesting, and Brockton getting the last two or three of these jump balls here. Tough breaks for Franklin. Baker putting that down for a two. 12 point lead by Brockton. Scarangello gets the ball to Harvey. Harvey goes to the basket. And a surprising no call there as there's a lot of contact, but it won't matter as Andre O'Neill finishes that layup beautifully. Well, it looked like Harvey was more concerned right there about creating contact versus putting the ball in. Certainly, and I wonder if that's a strategy of trying to get their bigs into foul trouble or whether Harvey's well, just trying I to get to the so. play. But if you, if you looked at that play, you would have noticed that Harvey jumped to his right into the defender. And that's a three-pointer by Fonts. And I would almost consider man-to-man uh, -man guarding Fonts and leaving the rest of the team in the zone. I know that's a bit of an unconventional style, Jay, but he is really being, he has really been their spark plug all game. And I think eliminating him uh, is going to be the key to Franklin's comeback. O'Neal's going to go to the line for two. And the South Powell looks to cut this back to 11-point deficit where it was as we went into halftime. Makes the first. And despite the size of this Brockton team, Coach CJ Neely still staying with his uh, smaller, scrappier lineup, obviously counting out um, the additions of Ben Harvey and Sean O'Leary. And that's good. Yeah, CJ, uh, Coach Neely's only used two of his subs. Hanzi and Herndon have played, plus the five guys you see on the court right now. O'Neal playing tough defense. And it's, uh, it's gonna be a tough game for you when the other team's centers are hitting threes like that, Jay. Yeah, Hopkins with the three-pointer. Harvey. Think... Sorry, go on, Jay. Gonna get a foul there, I think on, yeah, that's on uh, Baker, Deron Baker, his second. And I think uh, I'm, I'm on the same page as Coach C.J. Neely here when I say that the key to Franklin's comeback is not going to be in the offensive end. It's going to be on the, it's, on the, it's gonna be on the defensive side of the court. Uh, we saw a little bit of that to start off this second half uh, with Franklin creating a few missed shots, uh, a turnover I believe as well. Um, but they haven't been able to continue that here, and it's allowed this deficit to grow back to where it was, um, even past where it was as we went into halftime. I'm not sure what they're doing. Oh, you know what? There's blood on the ball. They sent Harvey out because he had blood. Uh, there appears to be blood on the ball as well, so they go over to trainer Jen to get that taken care of. And Harvey... Fortunately for the Franklin faithful, looks to be all right there as he's just more concerned about getting cleaned up so that he can come back into this game. So I, Harvey cannot come into the game. He's got to sit. Because he was sent out, he's got to sit for a tick of the clock. So they're also sending, it looks like Harvey's uh, got blood on his jersey, so he's gonna have to change his shirt. So you, that's a, a rule, you cannot take your shirt off at the court. So he just slid out into the lobby. Interesting, and Jacques coming back into this game since the, for the first time since the end of the first quarter there, um, in which he had an immediate yeah. impact hitting that three-pointer. As Sean O'Leary hits a tough two-point basket right there. You know, um, that, that's what you need from O'Leary. Absolutely. Uh, that's what he did the other night. O'Leary being the Hockamock League MVP is certainly a leader on this team, and they're going to need him oh. as a tough shot is made there by Montero. Right now, Brock did camp miss as they're up by 14. Jax. 
He thought uh, O'Leary there was going to cut more towards the mid-court line. And to me, that almost looked like it just slipped out of his hand there, Jim. Yeah. Caden Sullivan coming into the game, replacing Scarangello. And what do you think that move's about, Jay? I think it's all about scoring. <laughs> if you right. can get Sullivan going, maybe hitting, plus he's, uh, that's good defense there by both of them. But if you could get Sullivan open and he hits a couple of threes, and maybe that wakes the team up. And I believe that is the third or fourth block for this Brockton team tonight. They have been an absolute menace in the paint. Hopkins, no good. And O'Leary with phenomenal defense after Brockton collected that rebound. And O'Neal wide open underneath the hoop. Jock doesn't find him, takes it himself, and he scores. It looked like a little bit of contact there on the wrist, but no call, Jay. You know what? They, I would be shocked if they called that because they are letting a ton go on the court. And certainly uh, that's playing right to Brockton style. Absolutely. It's got Franklin totally thrown off. And great help defense by O'Leary right there as he is the spark right now that this Franklin team has been needing. Got a timeout Franklin as O'Neal eventually had to dive to the ground to get that ball, but he had possession uh, both, uh, I think Coach Neely and O'Neal called timeout, so Franklin will inbound it. And Jay, not much has changed for Franklin's situation here in the first four minutes of the second half. No, not at all. I think what the, the conversation has to be right now outside of general strategy and, and what they want to do going forward has to be, we can't look at this as a 12-point deficit right now. This, we have to look at this as a journey, as an individual progression, as one offensive possession, as one defensive possession. And by doing it that way, that's how they're going to get back in this game. Because when you consider the fact that a 12-point deficit is over a third of the points that Franklin has scored so far, that can be a little bit of a daunting task, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. But as we know, and we have seen so many times this year, so many of these Franklin players can get hot at any time and completely change the course of the game that they're playing. So Franklin will inbound the ball. And O'Leary will be the inbounder. Brockton, Brockton's going to play a kind of a full court, soft man-to-man -man right now. And Harvey back over by the sidelines by trainer Jen. We'll see if he comes in soon. That's going to go against O'Leary. And O'Leary clearly frustrated right now. Yeah. He is not used to missing those shots. Now, Harvey coming back in, replacing Jocks. Yeah, that's going to be on Harvey. And is that his third or fourth? I've got it as his fourth. The board had it as his third. Uh, if you saw that there, Harvey had his arm extended out to his side and, and was holding the big guy. Now, right there, that could have been a foul against cheating. <laughs> and Jacques trying to get in his face a little bit. See if he can create some momentum for this Franklin team as the bench guys are coming out with all kinds of energy as Sullivan looks like he has just drank about five energy drinks <laughs> guarding Fonts. And a brutal, brutal call there, Jay, as they have been letting so much go. That feels like an interesting one. I, uh, yeah, that, that, because he, it, to me, it looked like he had legal position. He was fine. I, I don't know how you could call that and not call some of the other stuff we've seen. 
But uh, as, as tough as that call was, it's not the reason that Franklin's down by 12 nope. right now. Can't blame it on the refs. Good job by Allen on defense. And that one just floated by Jacques' head. He was more preoccupied he, with guarding 20. Yeah, he, he kind of boxed him out, but he forgot to see where the ball was. Just over a minute left in the third quarter. Going to have a foul that's going to go against Baker. A hold. His third. Team fifth. And seemingly out of nowhere, Jay, this game is being called much more like we were seeing last night. Well, you got to wonder if the officials had a conversation about that. Now, Leary attacking the fresh player for Brockton and gets a quick two on the board for Franklin. 12-point lead, just under a minute left in this round of 16 MIAA Boys High School Tournament Division One action. And that is surprisingly going to be Franklin Bond. O'Leary was laying out of bounds and touching the ball. I'm a little bit surprised I, about not, the call there, Jay. I'm not sure. The, uh, the referee who covers that line. So th that was the official that was outside. His call. But it looked like the other official had it going the other way. He just, to his credit, he did a good job to not signal. But uh, certainly a break that Franklin could use as a lot of them have been going against them as this game has gone yeah. on. And uh, a delay on the inbound here as they wipe up the sweat that amassed over there on the side of the court from the body of O'Leary smacking down as he tried to grab that loose ball. 43 seconds left in the third quarter. Brockton with a 12-point lead. Allen, O'Neal, O'Leary, Jax, and Sullivan on the court for the Panthers. Get in there. And that is all it takes for Justin Allen to get going. Let's see if he can knock a few more down and really put a dent to this deficit. Panthers cut that lead to under 10, and let's see if they can keep it here. No shot clock, Prevent Jay. Brockton from scoring. And Sullivan with some excellent defense there on Fonts, not allowing him to get anywhere. That shot's going to be long, and that's going to be a foul against Fonts, number 14. His first, team sixth. And is that going to send Franklin to the line? No, that was the sixth one, the next one. Gotcha. So with 2.7 left in the third quarter, Franklin will try to get off a miracle shot to put a little bit more, to take a little bit more out of this lead here, or the, the deficit. Justin Allen for three. Oh! And he nearly hits it, Jay. He back rims it. What a nice shot there by Allen. So at the end of three, our score is the Brockton Boxers 44, the Franklin Panthers 35. We've got eight minutes left in this Division I round of 16 tournament game. And Jay Franklin only plus two on that quarter there, but certainly feeling like the tide might be turning a little bit uh, heading into this fourth. Let's see if it's enough for Franklin to come behind and get the victory. Yeah, it, it, you, uh, you know, you want to see how uh, Coach Neely too works his substitutes in the uh, rest of um, this game. Absolutely. I thought that brought some much-needed energy to the I court. thought it, it, having Sullivan in there was uh, was great. Jax was able to score on a layup. He had kind of an off play down at the far end when he, when he missed that rebound. He was boxing the kid out but didn't realize the ball was going right over his head. Yeah, and so my, my biggest, con not concern, but thing I'm wondering right now, Jay, is at what point does Coach Neely implement the full court press? Yeah, I know. I, you gotta think. Uh, you gotta think that. Um, 
that at some point they've got to put that pressure on. And honestly, Jay, I'm surprised they haven't done it earlier. It seemed like when they had them in a bit of a trap there that they were being successful with it. Um, the, uh, you know, and maybe the, if they put that on, Griffin, it will help them kind of negate some of the physicality of Brockton. They can only hope, Jay. As Elliot looks to take this one himself, and he does! What a tough finish from Sean O'Leary, and that is your Hockamock League MVP stepping up for these Franklin Panthers. The deficit is seven. O'Leary's got to do more of that. He was not that successful in the first half doing it. Things and have been better now. Jay, this crowd is coming alive right now. Yeah. Might it, this, the, the crowd may have uh, been... And O'Leary draws the charge on Fonts. Everything is Franklin right now, Jay. The that, boxers look stunned. That being said, there's going to be a Brockton timeout here. Uh, and the crowd getting on their feet now as they are letting the boys know that they have their town's full support. That, uh, that was a call that uh, went Franklin's way, but it easily, easily could have gone the other way, I thought. And we've seen that happen this game, Jay. I, we did not have a great angle. It's hard to see that from up here. And some of these calls finally starting to go in the direction of Franklin. It's really been one-sided this game. Uh, not to say that that's been yep. any of the officials' faults, but it's just been the way the chips have fallen. As the cheer, cheer team does some spectacular By the way, here. that is how Griffin and I came up here to the broadcasting station. We back handspringed all the way up here. <laughs> Jay with crutches in hand. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so the Panthers have cut the lead to seven with 7-10 seven, left in the game. And Coach Neely is keeping the young players out there that have started this comeback in Sullivan and Joss. As well as the star power of Alan O'Leary and then the sure-handed uh, sure well, shooter and defender, Andrew O'Neill. The... Uh, with Allen and O'Leary, your, your scoring could turn around on a dime. They can score so easily. Certainly, and Allen, seeing a three go through a few minutes ago, hasn't had a great look since. They're going to see if they can get him open. Great pass that's blocked. And the wingspan of Montero there, just too much for O'Leary to get the shot off. And Jock with a great recovery play there as Franklin does not let that ball get in. Jocks did a great job. Oh, what a layup! And what a move by Jocks as he falls over. He can hardly believe it himself. <laughs> this place is jumping, Chris. Or, uh, Jay, okay, pardon that's me. That's all right. <laughs> Chitty with the deuce. Seven. Our difference here. 46-39. And Jock's back. Let's see if he can get a hand on it. Oh, and a tough and one for Brockton. They needed that one. And they get it. Well, with six minutes left in this game, Jay, we are feeling the energy come out of this crowd. Yeah. Have a whisk. Uh, Harvey's coming back in for Sullivan. So perhaps the, the lack of physicality that that play uh, exposed there in terms of uh, presence in the paint, the reason for that. Could make a make free throw makes it a 10-point lead. No, it'll stay at nine. Allen to Jocks. Jocks goes to the basket, scores again. And Jacques, it is the Hansi Jacques show right now, as I believe he has scored Franklin's last six points. Yeah, he is nine for the game, nine of the 41.
and a player who didn't see many uh, minutes in the Franklin's last playoff game is making all the difference right yep. now. Keep an eye on Harvey down low with Chitty. They are continued the way they've kind of been banging at each other all game. That shot's no good. Rebound, Brockton, and Allen fouls him. And Allen frustrated with the call. He thought he got a lot of ball there, Jay. Yeah, he did. And clearly so does the Franklin student section. Regardless of what the spectators think, though, uh, it doesn't Dr. change. Moore shoots here. Yeah. Fonts misses the first. Potentially at the hand of the jeering Franklin student section. And he makes the second. Just an eight point lead now for Brockton as the final five and change wind down here. Harvey brings the ball up. Allen now. O'Leary, nice move. No good basket, no good. Good effort there. And O'Leary triple teamed in the paint there. Well, an extremely talented player uh, with some open teammates who are dangerous around the arc. I would have liked to see him pass that one yeah. up. Yeah. And Brockton easing up the tempo now as they look to take the time off this clock. And Montero is incredulous that that was not a foul. They, you know, the one thing is, there's, someone's got something to say on every single whistle. Well, it tells you they're passionate, doesn't it, Jay? Yes. Allen. Thought about it. He did. Kicks it out. That's going to be a foul against Brockton as Jock's got his hand held as he was going up for the rebound. So it's going to be one and one. And a good spot to be right now if you're Franklin with a one on one, uh, one and one, and four minutes and 22 seconds left in this game. Yeah, both teams will be shooting foul shots here on out. And on the Brockton side of things, you cannot let Franklin get back into this game at the stripe. You got to make him earn it. As a that uh, that was not his strongest foul shot. No, he was certainly not planning that one. The score 49-41, Brockton. As Jacques almost comes away with the steal there off Fonts. Brockton looks to go fast. Harvey gets a hand in there, and he comes away with it. Franklin's going to try to break out fast. Harvey bringing it down the court. Bounce pass to Allen. He cuts in, oh. and he misses the wide open layup. Franklin needed that one, as there are four minutes left in the game. Brockton on the break. The shot missed. Kicks back out. Fonts with the three-pointer. And that's off the back iron. Fortunately for the Franklin faithful, Jacques is fouled, and he is going to go back to the line. And Hopkins picked up, I believe, his fourth foul. And Franklin yeah. getting into this time of game where they're going to need a lot to go right. Can't be having too many of those Brockton threes falling. So this is going to be one and one for Jocks. Who has had free throw trouble throughout the season, too. I remember I was at the, the first game that he came back, and he airballed the free throw in that one as well. So Franklin with their fingers out, hoping he can hit this one. As he back irons it, and Franklin unable to corral the rebound. Well, you know, that back iron, that was, I think, because the last one, he came up short of everything. Absolutely. And he didn't want to do right that now. again. Timeout, Brockton. And with 3.46 left, Franklin is down by eight. Not where they want to be, but certainly not an insurmountable deficit, Jay. Yeah, it, it's... They've, they've got to pick up... They've got to shoot faster. They're taking too long, I think, with every possession. I think you're right, Jay. And Brockton very clearly slowing down their pace of play, trying to milk this clock a little bit. Franklin has to be aware of that um, and make sure their possessions are quick while still getting off quality looks. Yeah, exactly. And um, 
you know, th there's just under four minutes left. You're not going to cut that unless you have something weird happen. You're not going to cut that eight-point lead in a minute. Yeah, certainly not. And so I think that needs to be the conversation in the Franklin Hall right now. Like, let's see some urgency out there, but also know that it's not do or die mode in the sense that we don't need to see uh, threes from the logo and none of that. Let's still get in the zone. Let's get to make sure we get a good look on offense. What we can't have right now is wasted possessions is what they're saying in the huddle. No, absolutely. Absolutely. You need your leaders to stand up here. You need them, though, to keep their heads. Jocks on Baker. Baker gets rid of the ball. Lob in. Boy, they all felt, uh, it collapsed on cheating there. And this is the defensive aggressiveness that Franklin had to be playing with this whole game. That's going to be a two, not even close. And you love, love, love that shot if you're a Franklin fan, Jay. Yeah. The, Decent uh, amount of time left on the shot clock, and certainly not the player you want taking that one if you're Brock. Well, you know what? Just as Franklin needs to speed it up, Brockton's going to keep it slow, but they don't. Brockton just doesn't seem to play as well. Justin Allen. He Four, three. is electric, Jay. It does not matter how the game has gone for Justin Allen. If he has an open look, he will hit it. Hit. That was a good five feet behind the three-point line. Cuts the lead to five. I mean, I shook my head watching him let go of that one, Jay, but clearly Allen knows better than I. And that's no good. And Jock asking for the ball as he was wide open on the court. Allen just didn't see him, unfortunately. The lead is five for Brockton. O'Neal to Jocks. Jocks for three. And I'm not sure that's the player that nah, they want taking the shot with 2.30 left. I don't think that's the shot you want. You know, to Hadzi's credit, he's just feeling, he's feeling good about his shot. But if you're going to have a three-pointer, I think you want uh, Allen taking it at this point. Absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm, on you with, I'm on the same page as you for that one. And the travel call on Cheetah. They, well, if that hadn't been a travel, it would have been an offensive foul. And Franklin is going to look to make it a one-possession game on this possession. As Jacques is staked out in the corner. O'Leary setting up on the long on the baseline as the ref tries to wipe some sweat away from just underneath the net. And Harvey needs some urgency to get up this court. He looks like he's taking a speed old time right now. And there it is. As he goes all the way and it just doesn't fall oh. for Franklin. And then Harvey had his hands on the ball and then he lost it. And if you're Franklin Brockton, cannot score right now. That would nope. be deflating. Under two minutes left in this tremendous round of 16 game. And another travel. On Brockton, this is exactly what Franklin needs right now as uh, Brockton's given them a little bit of help to get back in this one. Co Coach DeBarros for Brockton is imploring the boxers to just pull it together as the last minute or two, they've kind of fallen apart a little bit. And I wonder if fatigue is starting to set in for a lot of these players. Got a held ball that's going to go to Brockton. And a tough break for Franklin there. Yeah. Still plenty of time, but as we mentioned on that last possession for Brockton, Franklin cannot allow any points right now. They uh, actually let the kids, uh, O'Leary, try to get that ball out before they blew the whistle. And that's a deuce there. Makes it a seven-point game, 51-44 Brockton. Harvey goes to the basket. Ah, and Harvey, knowing they needed a quick one there, tried to give it to him, yeah. was able to do it. And uh, this one looking more improbable for the Panthers as it goes on. No foul call there, which astounds many of the players. defense by Jocks there. Oh! And this is some circus ball here with 50 seconds, seconds left. left. 
Allen for three. Oh, in and out. That went halfway down. And uh, this is looking like it might have just slipped out of the hands of the Panthers here, yeah. Jay. Fonts gets fouled by O'Leary. Believe that's his third. And uh, with a three possession lead right now for the boxers, Franklin certainly hoping that they were uh, wishing they could go back in time, hit a few of those shots yeah. in those last few minutes. They needed them. You know, or go back the, the first quarter where Franklin shot so poorly. 100%, Jay. It was not a great first quarter for Franklin as Brockton took it to him from the first whistle. And the Herndon. defensive tenacity that we've seen in the past few minutes has not been the story of the game for Franklin. Herndon coming in for Jocks. And I believe this is in a move for shooting capabilities and freshness. I would think you're right. 40.2 seconds left. The lead eight. It'll be nine if he makes it. And it is. Fonts makes both of them. And Franklin in panic mode right now. And for Franklin, very fortunate that yeah. the boxers fouled them there. That's going to be a foul on Baker. Uh, yeah, they're very, they, they uh, very lucky and went their way. Because as of right now, that is the thing keeping them in this game. That call doesn't happen. I don't know if, I think there might be a 0% chance as opposed yeah. to the minimal percent chance that they have right now. So uh, Franklin will take a time out here before they attempt their two foul shots. It's double bonus, 35.7 seconds left. And Brockton up by nine. And Coach Neely can't give up just yet here. Uh, I think he has to, instead of maybe putting in the seniors or taking out the seniors, letting them um, ride it out on, on that for that last moment on the bench, anything like that, as um, the Franklin coach John Layton did for, for the girls' team last night, I think he has to play for this game until the last whistle. Oh, you have to. You, unless, unless, uh, you know, Brockton happens to score a couple of quick buckets, gets up 10, 12, 14, then you can put the subs in. But again, there's only 35 seconds left. You can hear the Brockton fans cheering. Yeah, they came out strong tonight. They, they most certainly did. Even some of the ones sitting behind the bench get in their fists in the huddle right now. You know, you haven't heard uh, that much from Rattle City. You know, nothing overly loud from them. No, I think the loudest you've heard him tonight, Jay, was during the two fonts free throws in which he missed yeah. either the pair or the first. Yeah. I can't remember. But since then, you're right, they have been quieted, and definitely and he, that was not the story of the game. No, years past that uh, Rattle City would make a huge difference. Not so much tonight as Herndon uh, in and out. You know... Griffin, that's the way the night has gone for these guys. Certainly. Each time it looks like Franklin might be on a, a wave of momentum. Each time it looks like they might get a steal, a rebound. Um, something inadvertent happens. or it, I like Just like Herndon's free throw there, it just rims out and it doesn't quite work out for the Panthers. Jocks coming back in for Herndon. It'll be Franklin Ball on the out of bounds here. And Jay, I think it's three-point time for Franklin. I don't think you can settle for any twos. Justin Allen for three. Good. And that is the look that Franklin needed to be getting the whole game, Jay, and they yeah. hadn't. Yeah. Well, as our score is 53-47, Brockton with 27.6 left in regulation. I'm Jay Horrigan alongside Griffin Tolanen, and we have failed to mention that we have been fortunate enough to have the legendary Chris Leveron as the captain of our ship tonight. Directing, filming, yelling at me when needed. He's <laughs> done everything. He has. Thank you, Chris. Seems to be something, a question at the table. And whatever it was, I think they've taken care of. And is this going to be a technical f foul on 
No, I believe. No, I was no, looking this, at O'Neal They're setting just up lining the up. Yeah. Uh, Jay, if, if Franklin isn't able to pull this one out, uh, regardless of where they are or not, uh, how did they get a, in this position right now? What led to them being down six with 29 to Well, go? you know, they were down at one point. I think the biggest spread was 14. I They've been right. down pretty much since the opening quarter. You know, the opening couple of minutes. And Franklin is very upset that they did not let that one go. And you know what? The whistle. I, I, I think they're... I think they may have a beef on that. Compared, compared to what, what has been called, you know, this entire game. Yeah, that, that, and I wonder if that's a situational one for the referees, Jay, in terms of they're expecting Franklin to foul. They're expecting to blow the whistle. Maybe just a little bit trigger happy as they saw Franklin come in on oh, that Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It, because it... And that's no good. So it works out for the Panthers. Justin Allen in the corner. His three is no good. And ends up going out of bounds off Brockton. So Franklin will get it back. Another Down break six for the Panthers. And with the 17 Panthers, seconds. If the Panthers are able to get a quick three off here, they will cut the lead to three. And Brockton will still be shooting There's, a one and one. So it is not over yet, Jay. Uh... So Brockton takes a timeout. And Jay, I would be surprised if uh, Scarangelo doesn't come back in here um, and Coach C.J. Neely puts out who he thinks are his five best, most dependable three-point shooters. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I agree with you. Uh, Brockton, it looks like Brockton's out of timeouts and Franklin has got two left. Uh, both teams will be shooting two foul shots on any foul going forward, I believe. And Jay, what's important to note about those two timeouts for Franklin is that gives them the ability to heave the ball off the court, catch it, and then call the timeout to be able to set up yeah. from the side. Certainly a better situation for the Panthers than if they had to take the ball all the way up the court. And a lot needing to go right for the Panthers at this point, but their, their uh, hopes of the continued season have not been squashed just yet, as it looks like Bradley Hernan will take the ball out of bounds with Sean O'Leary, Ben Harvey, Andrew O'Neill, and Justin Allen as the four players looking for the ball. Or pardon me, it's gonna be Sean O'Leary with they the just, ball out of bounds. Yeah, they just uh, switched, turned in and O'Leary switched. Herndon with the ball, gets it to Allen. Allen for three off the front of the rim, and that's going to be a foul. I think they're going to call it. No. Nope. It's going to go against O'Leary. His fourth, team's tenth. That honestly could have been uh, O'Neal or O'Leary. You almost wish it was O'Neal. O'Neal doesn't have any fouls. And at Allen this point, just standing there after that three, right on, right on line, but just not enough power to yeah. get it there. He wants that one back. Montero makes the first of two, which makes it a seven. Notably, yeah, three point, three point possession, or three, three point, uh, three possession lead. Pardon me, for the boxers. And that's good. So it's an eight-point lead right now. 11.1 .1 seconds left. Got to hit quickly. Harvey for three. No good. And that's, well, Justin Allen on the foul there. That'll be his fourth. Uh, Baker will go to the line to shoot two. I believe it's, but no, it's Fonts going to shoot two. 2.8 seconds left. Uh, Coach Neely's making some changes here. Will make some changes. He's going to get uh, Mirandi and Scala, I think, into the game. And then Benoit, I believe it is. Oh, yeah, but uh, Scala was taking his shirt off, but... Uh, I, I'm not sure why 
So coming out, Justin Allen and Harvey, uh, the two captains, as they embrace everybody on the sideline. 56-47, sub coming in for Brockton. Tough way for the season to end for these Panthers who have had a tough season. Record-wise, they've had a great season. And O'Leary's shot is no good. So Brockton's going to win this 56-47. These guys, uh, the, the Panthers have had a tough year, tough way to lose, but it goes all the way back to Christmas time when they lost their trip to Florida because of the Southwest Airlines disaster. Uh, and it, it has made for a, um, a tough year for the seniors to be leaders, even though the record wouldn't necessarily indicate that. Um, but it, it has been. Uh, Griffin, you have any final thoughts? Yeah, Jay, I want to go over the story of this game a little bit. We've been talking about it for a while now. Um, but if there's one word to sum up this game, it's physicality. Uh, Franklin, out of the gates, was not prepared whatsoever um, for the tempo and the physicality that Brockton played with, and certainly not assisted by the referees uh, who are letting the boys play tonight. And uh, that's what led to Brockton's early lead and um, Franklin being taken out of their game. And regrettably for Franklin fans and the players, uh, they weren't able to find it quickly enough. So that's going to do it here from Franklin High School. It's also going to do it for our winter sports coverage. We will be back with you probably in about two or three weeks when we start our spring athletics coverage at the high school. I uh, want to thank everybody involved with Franklin TV, Pete Fasciano, Chris Flynn, our captain of the ship here, Chris Leverone, Griffin Tolanen here, uh, who only was doing his second broadcast ever tonight, and he did a great job. Ryan Martin did a tremendous job all winter, as did Pete Royce. So for all of them, everybody at Franklin TV and radio, I'm Jay Harrigan. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a month.